I have been asking a simple question always. When we deal with the divisional charts nowadays, because we are in the phase of reconstruction of knowledge, some people think that the purpose of divisional chart is to look at a house in depth. For example, if you want to look at second house in depth, you go to the second divisional chart. If you want to look at the third house in depth, you go to the third divisional chart. If you want to look at the fourth house in depth, you go to the fourth divisional chart. This approach is taken by some people. Whereas this approach is true, but it is not completely true. To be honest with you, in Vedic astrology, three set of divisional charts are used, Shadvargas, where six divisional charts are used, right? D1, D2, D3, D9, D12, and D30, the six divisional charts are used. Or D7 is added to it, it becomes seven divisional charts. Or D16, D60, and D10 is used, added into it, it becomes 10 divisional charts. Or the 16 divisional charts. Now, if you see there are 12 houses in horoscope, and neither of these categorization of divisional charts, Shadvarg, Shaptvarg, Dashvarg, and Shodasvarg fits correctly into it, right? So basically the approach that one divisional chart is an in-depth microscopic view of a particular house is somehow incorrect. Right? This is not very true when it comes to Vedic astrology. Talking about other streams of astrology, this is true. And that stream, where this opinion is legitimate, where this opinion is valid, is the Tajik stream, on which I have taught a very elaborate and extensive course previously, which is available for uh, purchase also. And Tajik is one of a, one of very important tools to answer Prashna quickly and also to time events with confidence. As you people may know that I do consultation on a regular basis. And whenever it comes to timing of event, not even a single consultation I do without consulting Tajik charts. Coming back to the topic again. So in Tajik, what happens? There are only 12 divisional charts. These divisional charts pertain to the 12 houses of the horoscopes. Right, first house is seen with Rashi chart, second house is seen with D2 chart, Hora chart. Right, third house is seen by the third division, fourth house is seen by the fourth division, fifth house is seen by the fifth division, and so on and so forth. Now, in one particular aspect, this is same as Vedic astrology. Right, what, what I will call traditional system, because Tajik is also Vedic astrology only. Right, traditional system versus Tajik system, right? So in one sense, this is similar to traditional system because the calculation of D2, D3, D4, D7, D9, D12 remains the same. It is, but at the same point of time, it is different from the traditional system also because the calculation of D10 is not the same. The calculation of D10 is different. Secondarily, D5, D6, D8, and D11, these four divisional charts which are not used in Vedic astrology, traditional astrology in fact, is introduced in the Tajik system, right? So this is a particular point. Now, what I have told in the previous video, you should remember that. What I have told that, if you read astrological classics carefully, you will understand that sages are not telling you to make a divisional chart and then predict. Instead, they are telling you to consult the particular division. Right? For a particular example, if you read about Navamsha, I will give you a shloka. Mars in the sign of, uh, sorry, Saturn in the sign of Venus, Venus in the sign of Saturn makes the person have Sexual pleasures by themselves, right? the uses of sexual toys, etc., is indicated at. Now, in this particular scenario, one thing is very important. What is told if Saturn is in the Navamsha of Venus or Venus in the Navamsha of Saturn? 
Now you should understand it is Navamsha of Venus. He is not telling Libra. He is not telling Taurus. He is telling Navamsha of Venus. The particular point what I highlighted in the previous video that there is no Leo or Cancer. This is Sun and Moon. In the same manner, this is Saturn Navamsha and Venus Navamsha, not Libra Taurus or Capricorn Aquarius. Right? This is something that have to be kept in mind. So the basic approach that is there is to check the division of the planet. The planet goes in division of which other planet. And then predict the result accordingly. Now whatever I have told up to this extent is many of my own researches and findings. And afterwards whatever I will tell you in my video is 80% of my own researches and findings. Right? So whenever I teach a particular course or I talk on any topic, I make sure that if I don't have to contribute anything new to this particular topic, it is better to not, not talk on it. Don't waste your time, right? So that, that's a particular point. So a lot of my own researches, lots of my own uh, you know, findings, which is inspired by the teachings of the sages I'm just going to share. So this one point becomes extremely clear that it is the division of planet. It is not a Rashi which we are dealing with. As I have told you in the previous video itself, that the purpose is not that you make a horoscope or you make a Kundali and place planets there and then read it. This is not the approach. Instead, the approach is of finding the division. For an example, let's take the three divisional charts which are different than the normal chart. First of all, let's quickly go through the calculations, right? You can see the PDF. This is from the Tajik course, by the way. Aries is loaded by Mars, Taurus is loaded by Venus, Gemini is loaded by Mercury, Cancer is loaded by Moon. Liu is loaded by sun and so on and so forth. This is lordship for the Rashi chart. This you already know. In the Hora chart and the male sign, the first Hora, 0 degree to 15 degree belongs to sun. The second Hora, 15 degree to 20 degree belongs to moon. In even sign, in female sign, the first Hora, 0 degree to 15 degree belongs to moon and 15 degree to 30 degree belongs to sun. This also, you know, this is repeated. In the Rekana chart, D3 chart, the three Drekanas, first from 0 to 10 degree falls in the same sign. Second Drekana 10 degree to 20 degree falls in fifth sign from the sign and third Drekana 20 degree to 30 degree falls in the third sign. So the ninth sign from the sign, right? So this is the table that you can consult. D4 chart is also simple. The 30 degrees are divided into four parts, 0 degree to 7 degree, 30 minute first part, 7 degree, 30 minute to 15 degree second part, 15 degree to 22 degree, 30 minutes third part and 22 degree, 30 minutes to 30 degrees the fourth part. The four Chaturthamshas map to the first, fourth, seventh, and tenth houses from the Rashi under consideration. Uh, that means for Aries, it will start from Aries. For Taurus, it will start from Taurus. For Gemini, it will start from Gemini and will go to four Kendra. Right? So the first Chaturthamsha of Gemini falls in Gemini. Second Chaturthamsha of Gemini goes in fourth to Gemini, that is Virgo. Third Chaturthamsha of Gemini goes to seventh from Gemini, that is Sagittarius. And the fourth, uh, and the fourth Chaturthamsha of Gemini will go to 10th from Germany, that is Pisces, right? Now, Panchamsha is a new chart. Panchamsha is a new chart that comes from Tajik, where 6 degree division is made. So, 0 degree to 6 degrees, the first Panchamsha, 7 degree to 12 degrees, the second Panchamsha, 13 degree to 18 degrees, the third Panchamsha, 19th degree to 24th degree is the fourth Panchamsha, and 25th degree to 30th degree is the fifth Panchamsha. Now, this is very similar to what you already know as Trimshamsha. In the normal, uh, you know, traditional divisional charts. But the degree span, which in Trimshamsha is uneven, here is strictly limited to six degrees, though the order is same. While calculating Trimshamsha in the traditional method, the first Trimshamsha belongs to Mars, followed by Saturn, followed by Jupiter, followed by Mercury, followed by Venus in male Rashi. And in female Rashi, the order is reversed where the first trim Shamsha belongs to Venus, second to Mercury, third to Jupiter, fourth to Saturn, fifth to Mars. All right, so the same order is kept here also. But the degree division, which is uneven in the traditional trim Shamsha, is made even blocks of six degrees each. 
for the panchamsha chart of tajit for this particular reason there can be confusion right there can be confusion that varam here have actually used the panchamsha chart but that's not the reality <clears throat> right the table is in front of you that you can easily do the calculation is pretty simple right for an example if i have to find a planet in panchamsha suppose i have to see where mars will go into panchamsha mars is 9 degree cancer right so you see cancer 7 degree to 12 degree between 7 degree to 12 degree is 9 degree in cancer it is into mercury so mars goes into the panchamsha of mercury and because you don't have to make a divisional chart you don't have to worry about it right simple what does it mean it basically means that mars anger right now for this horoscope suppose it is a horoscope for this horoscope mars which is a karaka for anger this is panchamsha the fifth divisional chart right it should deal with the topics of the fifth house now fifth house talks about intelligence fifth house talks about manifestation fifth house talks about progeny so in current scenario how will the anger manifest should be the question if this is the question you will see it from the panchamsha the fifth divisional chart and there you will see because mars is going into the division of mercury currently for the whole world because this this is current chart for the whole world the anger is being shown by speech the anger is being shown by the modes of mercury right this is how you have to read it i will come back to it again we we'll go to calculations first now for the sixth divisional chart sastamsha six divisions of 5 degree each is made 0 degree to 5 degree first division 5 degree to 10 degree second division 10 degree to 15 degree third division 15 to 24th division 20 to 25 fifth division and 25 to 30 is the sixth division now <clears throat> the planet the rashi distribution is even right the aries the first d6 of aries falls in aries and then it go into cyclical order what you call pravrutti chart right so the table is there 1 2 3 4 taurus gemini cancer leo virgo these six are the divisions of aries and then it continues from libra scorpio sagittarius capricorn aquarius pisces these two will be the five divisions uh, sorry the six divisions of taurus the six divisions of taurus will repeat into all the female sign and the six divisions of uh, aries will repeat in all the male signs right this is basic understanding and then the calculation of saptamsha that you are already aware about from 0 degree to 4 degree 17 minutes is the first saptamsha from 4 degree 17 minutes to 8 degree 34 minutes is the second saptamsha from 8 degree 34 minutes to 12 degree 51 minutes is the third saptamsha and so on and so forth the calculation is pretty simple astamsha which is new once again is a degreeical division of 3 degree 45 minutes so first astamsha is 0 degree to 3 degree 45 minutes second one from 3 degree 45 minute to 7 degree 30 minutes the third one from 7 degree 30 minutes to 11 degree 15 minutes the fourth one from 11 degree 15 minutes to 15 degrees the fifth one from 15 degrees to 18 degrees 45 minutes the sixth from 18 degree 45 minutes to 22 degree 30 minutes the seventh astamsha is from 22 degree 30 minutes to 26 degree 15 minutes and the last astamsha belongs from 26 degree 15 minutes up to 30 degree right once again this is cyclical so in aries the astamsha starts from aries and continues in the order like rashi's continue right so the eighth astamsha of aries you will see it is from aries to scorpio and then the next rashi taurus the astamsha starts from the next rashi of scorpio because scorpio was the last astamsha in aries so the next rashi of scorpio that is sagittarius starts the first astamsha in taurus this is called a cyclical division which is followed here the calculation of navamsha is same as traditional method the calculation of dashamsha is somehow different whereas in the traditional method the dashamsha for see here you will be able to see this is traditional method dashamsha so you see for aries the dashamsha is starting from aries for taurus it is starting from capricorn for gemini it is starting from gemini for cancer it is starting from pisces right so now basically what happens in the traditional dashamsha the last dashamsha of the male sign and the first dashamsha of female sign becomes repetitive this does not happen in the tajik dashamsha right so in tajik dashamsha it goes into cyclical order so for 
Aries, the first Dashamsha is Aries, second is Taurus, third is Gemini, fourth is Cancer, fifth is Leo, sixth is Virgo, seventh is Libra, eighth is Scorpio, ninth is Sagittarius, tenth is Capricorn. And then for Taurus, which is the next Rashi, because the ten Dashamshas are fulfilled for the ten Dashamshas are fulfilled for the Aries Rashi, the first Dashamsha for Taurus Rashi, which was in traditional method Capricorn, which made repetition of the Shamshas. In Tajik method, it is actually Aquarius. Right, so there is a slight difference in the calculation. For, yeah, slight difference in calculation is there. Right. And then because there is one Rashi repetition is not happening between Aries to Taurus, it changes all the remaining Dashamshas also, which, which, hap which is happening here. Right, you can consult that. You can see the table. Then next is Eka Dashamsha, D11, what you will call. This once again. Ra a Rashi is divided into 11 parts, 0 degree to 2 degree, 43 minutes, 38 seconds. First part, 2 degree, 40 minutes, 38 seconds to 5 degrees, 27 minutes, 16 seconds. 16 seconds is the second part and so on and so forth. In this manner, 11 parts are made. And in Aries, the first D11 belongs to Aries and then it continues in the order of the Rashi for the remaining 12 Rashis. The calculation of Dwada Shamsha once again is same. Where the Dwada Shamsha for the sign starts from the same sign and covers the next 12 signs in order. But as I have told you, these are not signs. So you should not take this, the first Dwada Shamsha of Aries is Aries. Instead, this should be read as the first Dwada Shamsha of Aries belongs to Mars. Second Dwada Shamsha of Aries belongs to Venus. Third Dwada Shamsha of Aries belongs to Gemini. Fourth belongs to Mercury. Fourth Dwada Shamsha of Aries belongs to Moon. Fifth Dwada Shamsha of Aries belongs to Sun, and so on and so forth. Right. In Jagannath Ura, it is quite easy to make the calculation. For the D10 chart, if you open here, you will get an option of Privirti Dashamsh, right? Oja. This Privirti Dashamsh is the technical Dashamsh, is the D10 of Tajik that we have just talked about. Other than that, the D5 chart is the same, right? Standard D5, what you will call. Just a second. D5 mass should be in. What was our calculation? Yeah. Right, rashes have to be taken. D6 is there, already present. D8 is also already available there. Right, you have to choose continuous regular Ashtamsha and D11 is also present there. Then you will choose Rudramsha regular. Right, these are the remaining divisional charts, the, the D5, the D6, the D8 and the, the D11 of Tajik is also present there in Jagannath Hora, right? So that can be easily seen. And you don't have to go with a lot of calculations. Now, basic point. <clears throat> so what I have told you in the starting, the concept, the concept that divisional chart is a microscopic division of a particular house does not stand true for the traditional method because there are a lot of divisional charts with no resemblance to the number of houses whatsoever. But this is true. For the Tajik stream of divisional charts, where the number of houses are 12 and the number of divisions used are 12 also. So basically, if you want to see, for example, you see, you want to see things with respect to marriage. Marriage is a matter of seventh house. Here you will have to forget the point that D9 is seed for marriage. You will have to forget it because then D9 is seen for marriage is the standard traditional approach. And here you are using another Tajik approach. So say if you want to see marriage, you will consult the divisional chart which resonates with the seventh house that will be D7. And then to see how planet work with respect to marriage, you will make the D7 chart. You will see where the planets are going, whether the planet is going in the division of sun, this planet will give ego in marriage. The planet is going in the division of moon. This will give nourishment in marriage. The planet going in the division of Mars. This will give fighting ability in marriage. 
the planet is going into the division of Mercury. This will uh, dictate communicative skills in marriage. The planet is going into the division of Jupiter. This will talk about ethics and morals in marriage. Or the planet is going into the division of Saturn, which will talk about struggles, etc. in marriage. Here you have to understand one particular thing that it can be that one person may not be having any of the planet. Right? When you will check the division of the planet, you will include Rahu Ketu also. Right? Whereas the divisions will belong to only seven planets from Sun to Saturn, it will not belong to Rahu and Ketu. So you say for a particular person, when you make the D7 chart, which deals with the seventh house, and then you are analyzing about marriage and you find there is no planet in the divisions of Mercury, right? That basically means there is no planet in the horoscope, which is ruling communicative skill of relationship. And in this particular man, and for this particular case, because there is no planet in the divisions of Mercury for this particular chart, communication in marriage will be very poor. On the other hand, it can be that there are two, three planets in D7 chart in the division of Saturn. And because there are two, three planets in the division of Saturn, that means there are many planets who indicate misery in marriage. That translates to the marriage being miserable. Right? So this is one very important point regarding how to read it. Point number one. Right. So in this particular manner, what you are going to do, you, you can see it with two, you know, you can see it with two approaches. There are two approaches which will work. Approach number one, how is sun working in marriage? You will consult the seventh divisional chart. How is sun how much sun is contributing to fortune? You will go to the ninth divisional chart. How is sun working with regard to name, fame, prestige, profession? You will go to the tenth divisional chart. How is sun behaving with respect to gains? You will go to the eleventh divisional chart. We'll see the condition of sun and then we'll decide the result. In this particular scenario, one more thing needs to be understood that if any planet is going to the division of moon, Mercury, Venus, or Jupiter, they are basically going into good divisions and doing these things will be easier. Whereas if any planet is going into the division of Saturn, Mars or Sun, this is going into a malefic division basically and this is going to create problem. Right. So I will basically give you an example. For example, if you want to see the profession of person, yeah. So suppose you want to see profession of this particular person, you will make the tenth divisional chart, the PV method one, that is Tajik method. And then there you will see as per this chart, because see only DTs have to be seen, but you will probably be using a software like Jagannath Hora. So I'm explaining it, it with this only. So in this D10 PV chart, there is no planet in Leo. So basically there is no planet who is ruling ego aspect in profession. This person should not be egoistic regarding his profession. In the division of moon, there is Venus, right? Moon indicates emotion. So Venus, whenever the Dasha Antar Dasha of Venus will come, the person will be emotional towards his profession. The person will take emotional steps in his profession. But how the ego is manifested? This is another point. This was approach number one. You take the planet. This is good for Dasha Antar Dasha. For example, Mars and Jupiter are going into the divisions of Saturn. That means whenever Mars or Jupiter Dasha Antar Dasha will come in profession, because we are looking at the 10th divisional chart, this person will have to do a little bit of struggle. This person will have to have patience. This person will have to do more hard work. This is approach number one. Approach number two is Sun is the Karga for ego. And how is ego manifesting in his professional life? You see, sun is going into the D10 of Mercury. 
So the manifestation of ego is happening towards happening through social circle. The manifestation of ego may be happening through communication. The manifestation of ego or pride will be through the body of the person because Gemini also indicates the body. This is the second approach where you take planet as a significator, right? <clears throat> where you take planet as a significator and then predict the result. Lastly, if you will want to see how is wife contributing in professional life, you will check the seventh lord that is Mercury that is going into the division of Jupiter in the 10th divisional chart. That means the wife is helping the native to uphold, to uphold the ethics and morals in professional life. This is how the analysis should be done and the analysis will be threefold. Actually, the analysis is multifold, right? All of this I will be teaching in my forthcoming course on divisional charts by the name of Varg Vivek, where I will be dealing in depth the 16 divisional charts of Parashar, the 16 divisional charts of traditional astrology and these four extra divisional charts. So a total of 20 divisional charts are there, right? Whatever divisional, whatever number of divisional charts are there in traditional streams, Vedic astrology, right? That includes traditional also and Tajik also. I am going to deal in depth in the course. Like in this particular video, I have shared four or five of my original researches with you people. In the same manner, many of my original researches will be taught in the course. In fact, the complete course itself is my original research. There is not a single word that I am going to teach, which is borrowed from any other person or anything as such. Not only this, you will learn in-depth uses of all divisional chart. It will make your predictive skill better. It will hone your predictive skill. You will be able to make predictions with confidence and not only this with the help of divisional chance, you will also be able to find and predict those results about horoscope, which you have never thought before that you can even predict. So those who are interested in learning about divisional charts and those who are very interested in learning what our sages meant, who are interested in understanding the real intention of sages should absolutely join this.